in Rizdar. The city does pass the institution the Colino Peshkestina Kurdistani, but Taibeti, Pre Seru Kadir, the Kim Kuman Pehwent V. Symposiumi. Mendohast, a Bafartim Kurdiba, Zmani de Ubavi Men Kurdia, Le Mahabinas Zmani Men Ternake, who has the Kurdi Hutabi Webekim. Jiber V. Sedami as the Bedestura, we be a Fukurina, we a half to Nahue, you have the English dominum. English you mentioned a Turbosha? Jiber Zahmeti and the Gishina V. the special Liborina, where the Hazam. First, please regard my statements as an exchange of experience among friends, not of a teacher. Secondly, when I received the final version of the program yesterday, um, I realized that there may be overlaps in content with other partic participants like uh, Mamoste um, talks. If so, I would like to apologize in advance, maybe also um, overlaps with other participants. And finally, late in the evening, I found out uh, that Kurdistan still has no constitution. I'm sorry for that. I have no, uh, I have to say that shocked me. Therefore, please consider my speech as delivered behind the veil of ignorance, but not imagined in the sense of roles, John roles. What I am about to present, present to you may completely miss reality. I will be satisfied if even a few words get through to you. I had the opportunity to get involved in all areas of constitution law. I received my doctorate in Germany. I have thought, um, thought as various universities, at various universities in Turkey, which I continue to do. I was a judge at the Constitutional Court of Turkey and had the ask of solving the most crucial constitutions, constitutional issues at the most critical times. When the possibility of a new constitution arose in Turkey and this context, the possibility of solving the Kurdish question arose in this context, I rolled up my sleeves and found the new constitutional platform. I wanted to offer my humble contribution. In this way, I was able to reach almost hundreds of thousands of interested people to hear their opinion and then transform them into a constitutional proposal. I have advised the Turkish parliament on constitutional issues, added politics in the AKP, not surprise, not be surprised, and became member of the parliament for a while, for a short while. I worked as a member of the Venice Commission of Council of Europe and advising various countries. Luckily, I have had a variety of experience. I met Seru Qadir, Mr. Seru Qadir eight years ago. We exchanged ideas of many, uh, on many uh, subjects. I learned a lot, of, a lot from him. Now he has invited me to the symposium to learn more from distinguished society, Mamosti. Yes, he's right. I think what I can do is share some of my experience with you and make some suggestions based on those experiences. First, in my opinion, commitments and policy statements may have symbolic value in the structure and functioning of state, but they do not ensure sustainability. Their fate depends on the outcome of the good versus evil, evil battle in the inner world of the people or groups in power. And believe me, the inside of human being without barriers, without limitations, 
offers no guarantee for freedom and peace. The human being is evil. The good in it can only assert itself in if the evil is disciplined by external barriers. Only then can the potential of evil transform itself into a productive dynamic. Second, the fact that the state is democratic, liberal, and constitutional at the national level does not guarantee that it will have, behave according to the same principle in international relations. This may behave more cautiously and moderately, maybe. But countries that do not have these characteristics are not predictable in international relations. For this reason, the sustainable and resilient existence of a state in the international arena depends on its embedding in a network of democratic, liberal, and constitutional states. Otherwise, existence depends on cyclical tactics or balance of terror. Third, substantive norms are not insignificant in a country's legal system, but their fate depends on systemic norms. The reality of substantive norms depends on how they are applied. When one speaks on applica of application, almost only the state comes into consideration. Be by action or by omission. The structure of the state and its institutions determines the effectiveness of substantive norms. Norms of freedom, norms that prohibit corruption, for example, and norms that generally prohibit or allow something are substantive norms. Let me explain it with the following ex example, and I apologize for that. You can try to stop an aggressive duck with a no-biting uh, banner. Or you can put a leash on the dog and tie it down. The first is the substantive norm, and the second, the system norm. Fourth, a country's strength does not depend on its military, its underground resources, the charisma of its leader, or international sympathy for its victimhood. These can become a handicap depending on the situation. A state that cannot legitimize itself belong through, itself, uh, through belonging, embrace, and appropriation by its own people is weak and doomed. Now, I would like to go into the situation in Kurdistan. I'm not an expert, nor I'm very knowledgeable. I apologize if there are any errors in my assessment. On the one hand, Kurdistan seems to me to share the fate of the Middle East. On the one hand, he is dealing with deadlocks and historical burdens that stem entirely from the traumas of his own national history. And history matters. Kurdistan still has no constitution, and Iraq's constitution is not even able to hold its own in Iraq. The state of Kurdistan legally provides an expression in the Iraqi constitution, while practice one can speak of a status quo. In view of regional situation and problems from one's own history, however, it is not easy to look to the future with hope. Kurdistan's constitution promise deeper, more complicated, and more frustrating, as Mamosi has already said, than constitution making any other country, let's admit it. A tra traumatized society tries to establish itself politically, but the Kurdish Kurds in Iraqi Kurdistan form only a very small part of this traumatized society. It is necessary to talk about a century 
full of negative experiences, betrayals, excitements, and broken dreams. People are not uniform. It encompasses ethnic, ideological, religious, and cultural fault lines. A long-standing guerrilla or partisan war was fought, and a political reorganization was undertaken because of this struggle, which seems to be successful. But not forget, partisan psychology could be also very destructive. These are, on the one hand, a handicap, and on the other hand, an opportunity for a healthy start here. Kurdistan cannot pursue policies that begin and end with trauma, traumata, injustice, or victimization, because the psychology of victimization is incompatible with responsibility. This psychology must be overcome and responsibility fulfilled as soon as possible. In this regard, in my opinion, is necessary dealing with the past, sincere introspection and acceptance, rational analysis of the past, the will to start on this basis, the will to clean surfaces. Before decision can be made on this big issue, such as the establishment of a new constitutional order, the obstacles that stand in the way must first be removed. In this context, legal amendments to the introduction of inter-party democracy, for example, the right to vote, and the rules of procedure of parliament can be considered, not only in Iraq, also in Kurdistan. Willingness to benefit from international experience Support not only for security reasons, but also for means, for reasons of international cooperation. The Venice Commission and the institutions of OSCE could be considered here, for example, not only the UN. It is of no use in these matters, in my opinion. A country's geopolitics related to politics, policies it produces according to its geographic location. Its, its economy is also directly related to whether it offers rational institutionalization. If we are not talking about an individual or group economy, both therefore require predictability, legal certainty, certainty, and bureaucracy operating under the rule of law and independent judiciary, limited power, and the relationship of belonging, embrace, and appropriation between society and the state, and ultimately mechanism uh, that do not allow abuse of power. Iraqi Kurdistan's success in the face of its historical responsibilities and challenges depends on the political choices it will make in many areas, starting with the formation of its political order, its organization, it, uh, its relationship with society, power sharing, balance, and control mechanisms, and finally, the atmosphere of security and freedom that it will bring to society. I assume that is the, it is the goal of Kurdistan, which, like in every democratic country, is in a struggle for existence. The basic framework of my speech will be the historical responsibility of Iraqi Kurdistan and the principles of the political structures it should have against the challenges it faces and the framework for a constitutional order. The scope of my talk is limited to two imperatives and some related principle. The first one, no, the first um, imperative is no statehood without institutionalization. I would like to draw your attention to a thesis that I borrowed from Daron Ajemoglu and Jim, uh, uh, James Robinson, spoken with the example of uh, Ajemoglu. Uh, example one, the US and America, Mexico belong to the same geography, but the freedom and prosperity situation is very different. The reason for this is neither geography nor language differences. The political decision of resp uh, respective countries and the institutional construction realized according to these political decisions are different. Mm -hmm. Example two, Spain started geographical discoveries in 14, 
1992. This country therefore initially had the most resources from the new colonies. I would like to point out that Spain was not a country that had institutions and mechanisms that would have turned these resources into a country's wealth. We are talking about a country ruled by a dynasty uh, blinded by the arrogance and pride of Reconquista. Towards the end of the 19th century, Spain became a country unread in Europe. But Great Britain, on the other hand, Great Britain began its colony, colon, uh, colonial activities 100 years later after Spain. There wasn't much to plunder in the colonies he owned. At the end of the 19th century, England became an empire on which the sun never sets. The parliamentary democracy that developed in the process shaped the whole world. London is the center of financial and trade disputes that occur around the world. This is due to different political decisions and consequently different institutions. In Spain, wealth flowed into the palace. England preferred the share to share wealth through inclusivist institutions. The certainly, they certainly went hand in hand with separation of powers. Professor Ismanjan, look at It's this. two minutes. Yeah. OK. So the institutions should be inclusivist. And the institutions should also um, be participatory. The participation, participation and representation of the people based on equality and, and equivalence is required for state building and uh, state administration. I need more time. You can try to you know, conclude in yes. a couple of minutes. Please. Okay. The constitution, so the Iraqi and every country need a constitution, but the constitution should meet in a pluralistic way, and but the pluralism never stops. Uh, with uh, the uh, conclusion, with the, with, the enforce, uh, with, the, with the enforce of the Constitution, but the whole State Department, the administrative should also uh, be uh, pluralistic. Uh, the, why are participation and inclusion important? In my opinion, it's important because it provides belonging to the state system. It facilitates embrace and motivates to ask for accountability and provides appropriation. No state, this is very important for me, no state in the world is as powerful as a state that has been embraced and appropriated by its citizen through inclusivist participations. And institutionalization can only be made by law and by a constitution, because a modern state is a combination of norms and combination of uh, internally consistent norms. Sovereignty belongs to the people, but doing do, uh, for doing this, uh, there are needed norms and there are needed institutions. Only the will of people can uh, be effective through these institutions and norms. Without institutions and without norms, it can't, uh, we can't talk of uh, a sovereign uh, people. Without separation of powers, there is essentially no constitution as uh, set out 233 years ago in, uh, during the French uh, Revolution. I want to come to the end. A vertical, uh, when I talk to the, of separation of powers, uh, it's not limited with, uh, uh, limited of separation of powers in uh, horizontal level, but it should be also applied in a uh, vertical level. 
And uh, from experience, I can say that it's the above mentioned states power are not designed in a participatory manner. There will be no talk of a constitution separation of powers, even if the powers are institutional and functionally separate. But they can only be used by members of a specific group, which is uh, not uh, good for a statehood. Experience also shows that the system will collapse in if intraparty democracy is not encored institutionally and legally. Since a democracy can only exist as a party democracy. Finally, I come back to the Article 16 of the Declaration uh, of uh, French Revolutionary Declaration. And there is let down any, I quote, any society in which no provision is made for guaranteeing rights or for the separation of powers has no constitution. And I also quote Hamilton's approach to Federalist Papers, uh, number uh, 84 here. <laughs> Hamilton answers the objection, of the, of, uh, objection as to why the Bill of Rights is not included in the Constitution of the United States. Using the example of freedoms of the press, he demonstrated the truth is, after all declamations we have heard, that the Constitution is itself, in every rational sense, and to every useful purpose, useful purpose, a bill of rights. Quote ends. Because this constitution restricts state's power through the separation of powers and deprives it of the ability to endanger freedom. From this point of view, I put my thesis in concrete terms as follows. A state system without separation of powers cannot protect freedom on the contrary, it becomes the greatest threat to freedom. I continue. In a constitutional state that has completed its institutionalization through inclusivist participatory uh, institutions and has separated powers, freedoms are guaranteed even if fundamental rights have, have not been mentioned in this constitution. And corruption is systematically prevented. Isn't the freedom of corruption index the most concrete proof of this? So, this is my question, and I stop here with this question. If you have any uh, question, I will explain uh, maybe the details to you. Thank you for your patience and uh, listening. Perspasse.